Sorry, getting all set up here. Um, okay, so today we are going to be talking about a uh, civic theme for uh, Drupal 9. Many thanks to Akil because he helped set up a lot of this presentation and then I just sort of added to it. So I want to make sure that I'm giving credit where credit is due. Um, he's been doing a lot of, um, you know, demos and slides for us. So um, just very helpful to have the assistance and wanted to call him out on that. Um, so in terms of uh, what I'll talk about today, um, so really quickly, I will touch on uh, products that we have called Launchpad in like 30 seconds. Um, and then I'll talk about uh, Civic Theme. Um, I'll go through an overview, which talks about the benefits of Civic Theme. Also, of course, what it is. Um, we'll briefly touch on the architecture. So this is the part where it comes in where I say I am not a dev or a TL. Um, I can speak very high level, um, but you know, just wanted to at least put that information in. Um, I'll give a very quick demo. Um, and then, of course, if there are questions, I am more than happy uh, to answer those as well. And apologies if you hear my dog in the background. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll go on. So for the civic theme overview, sorry, there you go. Let me just move. Apologies. <laughs> so there's always something when you go give a demo. Okay, so uh, Civic Theme Overview. So what is Civic Theme? Um, so it is our uh, open source design system. Um, Salsa Digital, we've um, initiated it. We're currently maintaining it as well. Um, we are in, I'd say, uh, in between alpha and beta, if that uh, terminology actually exists. Um, and so it's not 100% uh, public right now. Um, so we will definitely have more contributions in the future, but um, you know that's sort of where we stand. Um, it does have like you know many design systems where there's a library of already existing feature components that you can use out of the box um, already there and does include a D9 theme that works uh, with the design system. It's also built so that uh, we really wanted to make sure that content authors, editors, you know, others within um, government agencies, especially, and, you know, of course, uh, nonprofits and others could go ahead and build a site without needing to know any development or knowing how to code. Um, and so with that, um, the reason why, at least right now, we're focused on GovCMS is because unlike with um, D7 and D8, where you know you might have gotten a design theme, right? You got a design system with UI kit. Um, there isn't anything that comes with D9, and so we knew that a lot of people, um, especially right again, if you don't have a large development team, might feel like they you know were a little bit stuck, and we wanted to help solve that problem. So if we go into benefits, right, we already talked about the fact that we want content authors to be able to go in and, you know, really build their own um, sites. But, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not going to need potentially some project management right, or some UX. It doesn't, depending on um, the complexity of the site you want to build, it doesn't mean that that all goes away. But it does mean that you can still build a really high quality site and make sure that you're saving a lot of time and money while you do that, because it's not like where you have to take, you know, a theme and maybe make a whole bunch of customizations for every single site that you're doing. Um, it's really designed to make sure that you can use something out of the box. Doesn't mean that you can't do customizations or add new components. I'll touch on that a little bit later, um, but it is meant to, you know, get you running um, quicker and faster. Um, we've also done a lot of testing against WCAG 2.1 AA. Uh, we certainly haven't gotten it perfect um, before we even release. You know, we've talked a lot about doing another pass at that. Um, it's really, really important to us to make this um, accessible as well as inclusive. And so it's something that we're still working on. Um, the other thing that um, was really important to us as well is that you know, there was the Australian government design system. Um, we say former because it just is not um, being uh, used as much anymore. And it has kind of turned into AU gold right now, but um, it's not really government run by DTN anymore. Um, but those principles are still really, really important. Um, there's still a lot there in terms of uh, user research that was done, in terms of accessibility, right? The types of components that were used. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we were using all of that knowledge and not just kind of starting from scratch. Um, and then, as I've touched on already a few times, um, there is that simple page layout management um, with component um, design. 
So um, in terms of what, sorry, what content authors could do, um, site authors could use the same um, terminology as well, is that you can either um, build new layouts. Uh, we do out of the box have a lot of default content. Um, I'll show that in a little bit. Um, so they can make tweaks if they're not sure, they need a like simple, simple site really quickly. Um, they can just make those edits. Um, they can add new features. So something that's really, unique about civic theme and we'll talk about that in a little bit is that there are a lot of different um, variations based off of the component that you're using um, for the banner and I don't think I'm exaggerating with this Akil you can correct me if I'm wrong but I think there are about 40 different variations just for the banner um, and it's not really complicated it's just based off of the choices that you use through radio buttons if you want an image if you wanted to use the default so uh, it does allow for consistency across your um, site or if you have multiple sites, but it also allows you to make, you know, enough changes where it's not like every single page is going to look like a boilerplate template where you're doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and again, you know, we've said no coding um, needed to add, you know, some of those variations. It's just based off of the choices. Um, that uh, we have at the moment, but of course, uh, we can talk about uh, customizations in a little bit and, and how that comes in. So in terms of architecture, right, this is where I show a diagram um, and I talk to it very briefly. And if you want me to go into it, I will uh, be able to talk to, uh, you know, our uh, technical lead and, and solution architect and, and make sure that they get in touch with you. But um, really the way that Civic Theme is set up is there's a generic implementation but then of course you want the project you know, implementation as well, because it's we don't expect you to take civic theme and all of the colors and all of the topography and everything and use it exactly as is. Now the components, right? We would expect you know, for those to get used um, you know, pretty much as is and use those features, but right, there's all of the branding and the other pieces that need to be used. And so one inherits the other. Um, but in general, in terms of the architecture, it's built using uh, HTML5, SAS, and Twig, um, and that's the um, code foundation. So it also uses the principle of atomic design. I think a lot of us have seen this before, right, where you have atoms, the molecules build on the atoms, the organisms <laughs> build on the molecules, and then the templates build uh, on the organisms themselves. Um, something else that's unique, and this goes into, you know, where I was talking about how there are several different, um, you know, variations, right, that you can use is that you can see that there's a light theme and a dark theme. Um, and in certain cases, right, you might have instances where maybe you don't want to list out topics, um, you know, maybe you don't need to add in, you know, the suburban state, maybe you don't want to have the date, you know, maybe you want to make some changes, um, and all of that is possible. Um, in addition, we also do have um, Storybook, and so I'm not sure if everybody has um, seen Storybook before, um, but it really is a way for um, developers mostly to um, go in and see all the different components and, you know, to be able to um, see all of the different variations. Um, again, it's, it is useful for uh, content authors as well as designers, um, but it is something that, you know, for example, also if you've seen uh, Ripple with SDP, they use Storybook. Um, there are many other design systems that use it as well. Um, it is just a very useful tool uh, to be able to see all of the different um, components and to be able to um, play around and see what the variations are without having to write, go into, you know, your actual site and make all of the changes um, on the fly. So in terms of um, the different component customization, so again, this is where I say I am representing uh, technical leadership. I am not the technical leadership, and so they will be able to answer some of these questions, but it is possible to update um, the color palette via color system or component variables. So one of the things that I actually found fascinating um, with our dev team is that what they did in, in our architecture team is there are, uh, let's say, primary, secondary, and accent colors, and you choose those three colors. And then what they did was they actually created derivatives of all of those. And so there are all of these different color combinations that you can use for your components. And that can be, you know, your foreground background colors. Um, that can be with your, you know, outlines and links, like just the fact that it's done in a way where you don't have to say, okay, let me figure out 
you know, this hex code and this hex code and this hex code that it's done programmatically um, is very helpful. Um, that being said, it is something that we are looking at from um, accessibility as we still wanna make sure despite the fact that we're doing that from a programmatic perspective, um, that it is still accessible as well. Um, but we are also uh, putting out material um, for educational purposes on how um, if you change the colors again, you know, we expect that people use their own branding, um, how to check accessibility as well um, using that model. Um, so again, adopting components by adding or removing through slots. So um, we saw a little bit of that with Storybook. Um, then you can extend your components by replacing certain twig blocks, sorry, um, fully overriding components if you want to with your own custom component. Um, that might, you know, in the end, right, require a little bit more maintenance um, on your end because it depends on, um, you know, what, say, the civic theme, you know, base foundation is like um, in terms of what is being um, maintained as, right, like the civic theme product versus what people customize. Um, but at the same time, it is uh, possible. Um, and you can also add new components. Um, and that is something where we would certainly expect people to do that. And, you know, it could definitely, um, and this is the same thing for four as well of, you know, is it something where maybe that, uh, you know, custom component, is that actually maybe even a better version than what we had in the product? Um, and these all get contributed back um, into the product as well so that everybody um, can use them. Um, so this is what I was talking about in terms of the color. So you can see, you know, we have this neutral and it goes from 70 and 80 and 60. So there are all these different variations um, based off of, you know, what type of color um, and, you know, in terms of, <coughs> excuse me, what um, you're using that color for. It's just under 1400 variations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I was like, I know it's a lot. I just couldn't remember. Okay, awesome. Um, and so when I was talking about slots, this is really, you know, what we were referring to in terms of where you can make those um, replacements. All right. So um, additional things is that the components are paragraphs. Um, the good thing is, right, it's all part of Drupal architecture. So it's not like we've, you know, created something new that people aren't um, aware of. And, you know, the good thing, again, is that um, most people who have used Drupal, again, even if they don't have that technical knowledge, um, but, you know, they're used to adding content, et cetera, it's not something that will be um, a, new, a new idea or a new concept for them. Um, that being said, um, we do, you know, this one's a, a little bit of a basic one, right, because it's content, it's WYSIWYG, uh, we do obviously have a lot more, and I'll, I'll show that to everybody, um, but you have the option to, you know, choose um, lighter, dark theme, um, depending on, you know, what you've chosen, if you want a background, you know, do you want space around your component? So um, we do also allow for, I would say, some of those things that you might expect to be uh, more CSS and front-end dev-esque. I don't think that's a word, but I just made it up. Um, is that uh, it does allow uh, the content author, whoever is building the site, um, to have a little bit more of that freedom as opposed to having to go, you know, to a developer um, to do that. So uh, other things to note is that uh, although components are paragraphs, components are not just paragraphs. I know that probably comes across a little bit confusing, but uh, basically it provides all of the HTML structures. Um, so, you know, templates, layouts, views, blocks, form elements, um, they're all built on top of uh, form elements, which is a little bit confusing. I'll have to ask uh, about some of that terminology there too, but um, just in general, um, you know, the architecture does allow for a lot of flexibility. Um, so a demo, um, that always helps, right? Because I've been talking a lot about what civic theme is, but it's even better when we get to see it. So um, not ready for questions yet. Sorry, I'm just trying to Use my computer. So, all right. <laughs> so in terms of what we have with civic theme. So this is really what I was talking about in terms of, you know, we have um, this default content somewhat that comes out of the, out of the box, I'll say. Um, and this is at least the choice that we've made now. Doesn't mean that it will be the choice that we make in the future. Um, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, because um, we're giving people a design system, right? It's something that they might not have seen other than, you know, on our um, site that describes civic theme or, you know, where we gave a sample content site, that at least it's good to kind of give them, um, you know, a cool, 
probably correct my language, but I'd say like a starter pack almost to help people feel comfortable and, you know, where they can not just create new pages, but if they just wanted to edit something, they could do that too. Um, and so we give people, you know, typical utility nav, um, we give them, you know, their um, header navigation, um, banner, uh, cards that they can uh, make updates to, um, you know, other cards that they can make updates to. I think we have at least uh, at least six or seven different um, types of cards um, for people, just because we know that there's a lot of different uh, options that they'll want to use. Um, you know, we have next steps areas. Uh, we know a lot of times, right, people want to do um, promos. And then we also have uh, social media and um, footer as well. Um, so if we go into uh, make some edits to the page. Uh, I promise I will not go through like every component. We would be here all night uh, just to show what some of the uh, options are. So, you know, typical in terms of um, what you might expect from, you know, what we say a general tab, it's pretty much the um, page title. And then if you have any, you know, taxonomy terms that you would want to add um, in here. And then when we go um, to the banner, this is where I said that there are about like 40 different options um, because, you know, the large banner um, is what um, we had seen, you know, on that homepage. Uh, if you go to default, it's a little bit of a separate shape, I would say, um, but it's still the exact same background. Um, you can change if you want that, you know, dark blue, there's a little bit of a gray for the light. Um, you can, you know, obviously we see a lot of times on sites um, that they want a background with an image. Um, you can have that. Um, you can even have a featured image where, you know, you have a main image and then your featured image is like, you know, here in the corner. So there's a lot of different options. Um, and then you might remember when, uh, and we'll go back and look at the page in a minute, but we had these call to action buttons and, you know, just a simple statement. Um, but we wanted to have like an area um, right under the banner where people could put content that you know, I hate to say above the fold, but is mostly above the fold. It makes me cringe whenever people say that because, you know, web is not print, um, but at least right in people's eyeline, I'll say that um, in terms of when they first come to the page. But we wanted to also, um, you know, do a little bit of restriction. So it wasn't that you could put, you know, absolutely anything in there because, right, we all know that you do still have to think about, you know, is something uh, based off of CSS or how it's, you know, going to show up or the size of the component or whatever else, um, you know, it could drastically change, you know, the uh, size of the page or whatever else. And so what we did was um, we restricted to content, um, a promotion, um, the ability to put in some of those cards, and we will go into card container in a minute, um, or if they wanted a slider, because uh, we know that we see that a lot in uh, in government sites right on the top um, are the sliders. So um, that is uh, in terms of the banner. Um, in terms of content, um, there is a lot there. Uh, so if I just do a, a drop down, you can see, sorry, let me go again. Um, you can see all of the different options um, that are in here. So content with WYSIWYG, you have slider, you know, things that we would expect, right, in terms of accordions, maps, iframes, web forms, the ability to create listing pages. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, the card container, if I go and just add that, that's really the, you know, top level to everything. Um, and then you have all of these different types of um, cards that you can add as well um, that, you know, if you go to our storybook or we do have Figma as well, um, that's what we're using for design. Um, you can see all of the different uh, variations as well. So we tried to make sure that we were doing components that uh, people wanted the most, I should say. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're also trying to uh, not provide uh, the world, right? <laughs> because we know that this is evolving, um, you know, and that uh, we did want to, um, you know, keep it kind of within some boundaries. Uh, but that is why uh, we talk about contributing uh, in, um, you know, back when, when we get to that point, um, just to keep adding what we have. Um, so with all that, I did realize I forgot one very important thing. I feel like that was a rookie mistake, which is talking about content types. So the other thing that makes Civic Theme very interesting is that uh, we only have 
three specific content types, um, two of which are generally used the most. So we have one just for you know the alert banner, um, which we know is um, can be used as a block, et cetera. So um, that's the content type. The event content type, um, at this point in time, in all honesty, that's mostly used um, for a reference for cards. So, um, you know, we do have some landing pages, but we really did want to make this um, as lean as possible since we're using paragraphs. So most of the pages are built using the page content type. I feel like that sounds a little weird, but basically it really eliminates the need to, you know, be having five, six, seven, eight content types where you have to get that, you know, content structure exactly right. And then when you build your paragraph, like making sure that does it have the exact right thing where either it can be shared across all the content types, or do you have to make like that tweak just for that one particular content type, et cetera. It really helps um, with that content structure and keep it lean, but still gives you all the information that um, you need. So definitely something I think from um, an educational standpoint, as people start building sites um, that we're going to be focusing on, but um, just wanted to uh, mention that and realized I should have said that from the beginning as I was going through, but I circled back, so all good. Um, so the other things that I wanted to um, point to, and uh, there is a um, slide on this as well, but just in general, um, something that I wanted to mention, and I'll probably do this instead of going to the slide, but we do actually have this um, like corporate dot civic theme. It's really meant to represents um, a corporate GovCMS site. It's a department that we made up, um, but it's really meant to show what things look like without uh, having default content, um, right? You know, even the admitted, like if you don't have your images the exact right size, you know, what can happen, et cetera. Um, but it, it looks like a real site and it's meant to um, represent exactly what um, a user might see you know, if they go into, um, you know, different uh, pages as well. So the other thing that I wanted to uh, mention as well is our uh, civictheme.io site. So this is actually where, uh, I guess, the, the magic of about civic theme happens. So, um, you know, you are able to see our, um, you know, example uh, GovCMS site, which I just showed. Uh, the roadmap, we are updating it soon. I promise that we even admit in there that it's been a little bit since uh, we have uh, have updated it. Um, and then community support, something that's not um, in here is that we do actually on um, the Drupal Slack channel, uh, if you're on there, we do actually have a new channel. Uh, it's called Civic Theme Dash Design System. Um, so uh, feel free to come check us out there. Um, but we do also have additional um, pieces in here, you know, not just um, about compliance and storybook. We have all of the uh, components. So if uh, you are not somebody that generally goes to storybook and you just want to see, um, you know, about each of the um, components, uh, where one of the things that we did do um, is not just say, you know, what the component was, um, but once it starts loading on my uh, page, here we go. So you can see that you can actually like interact with um, the different um, knobs as well here uh, in order to see, you know, all of the different changes you can make, um, shows you how to change to a uh, dark theme. We talk about the compliance um, and the work that we did to be compliant to the former Australian design system. And then also um, how we did our accessibility uh, testing as well. Um, so we have all of that. Um, if you want to you know, learn more about um, development or design and you know, some of the specifics around that. Um, and then we also do um, point back to our developer documentation. So um, it is actually all on GitHub um, and so some of our uh, pieces are public, some of them um, are not yet, you know, we're still uh, in development and um, we're deciding uh, how much of this uh, will be open, um, but wanted to uh, make sure that everybody had access to uh, the documentation um, that we have here. And then uh, we do also uh, have an area where uh, once we do release uh, to the community uh, where we talk about uh, contributing back. So uh, that could be through Figma, it could be through um, code, you know, if you're an accessibility analyst, um, you know, it could be through, um, you know, accessibility work or testing, et cetera. Um, but that is um, 
I think everything that I have for civic theme. I don't know, Akil, if there's anything else um, that you wanted to add at all. Um, feel free, obviously, to sit back and relax too, but I <laughs> just wanted to <laughs> give you the opportunity if there's anything you wanted to uh, chime in with. That, that's all good. I think that's very good. Right. I guess the, the only thing, other thing I think you went past was on the Civic Theme IO site, there's uh, design, so Figma, um, Daniel yeah. mentioned Figma, the way that Civic Theme is set up, you can be it, you can contribute both in the design system itself, so we use Figma, uh, an open Figma library to show all the components, but also how it's set up, so if there's um, improvements or changes or additional functionality or modules, or designs, um, you can suggest those even from the very beginning from the design system part from the designs. And the intention is that they will flow onto the code eventually if it's accepted as part of the community contribution, then that would flow onto the design and the build itself. So the potential future release would have those updates in there. Sorry, my computer's deciding if it likes Figma or not today. Um, <laughs> keep talking if you need to. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Hopefully we won't just pick up space. Uh, yeah, so no, I was going to say, and so, uh, so beyond Figma, you can also make uh, code contributions as well. So it is fully open source at the moment with the code here, uh, sorry, designs here, as well as the code um, in GitHub. Yep, okay, thank you. Okay, there we go. Decided it wanted to play nice. So yeah, so we have this area of how to contribute. And so there's this nice step-by-step um, -step of, um, everything that you would need to know um, on how to contribute as a uh, designer. So, all right. Are there any questions at all? Danielle, can yeah. you please put in the uh, link to civicteam.io on the chat, chat oh, so cool. that? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, I could have known that, but <laughs> that's okay. It's all right. You can ask me. It's all good. <laughs> but yes, I will take care of that. Yeah, just so I think most of us here know about that, but for example, if Bizarre wants to go ahead and explore that a bit, it would be good. Yes, agreed. And of course, that doesn't come up as a link. Um, That's fine. Thank I'm you. Glad. Yes, Akil, Akil took care of it for me. Oh, he, knows, he knows I need help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Totally. So, okay. No questions. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Michael. So, any questions, guys? All righty. I think. Okay. That was either a very great demo. <laughs> I know, right? It's okay. I'm just, I'm going to tell myself that it was so fantastic that nobody had any questions. This is just make myself feel better today on this Wednesday afternoon. What about so, so maybe there's no questions, but has anyone got any sort of like feedback or comments or you know any, anything like like almost any any anything to do with civic theme that they've seen? And I think any you know oh, yeah any, uh, any, anything's worthwhile uh, to speak. Like to... Yep. Go on, Gopin. So uh, yep. So as you mentioned, uh, this is particularly for Drupal 9 theme, and we are focusing on uh, uh, mostly on the Drupal 9 uh, new projects and all. I just want to confirm any role, uh, any roadmap or anything in terms of a migration of Drupal 7 to Drupal 9, Drupal 8 to Drupal 9, how exactly it would be easy or any existing project uh can be migrated into civic theme it's possible it's a theme only but yeah uh is there any way or any automation that we can do as it's kind of a more suggestion as well that we can have something some custom module or some automation system that it automatically migrate existing system to our uh civic civic theme based system because it's all about the paragraphs and most of the sites are nowadays using the paragraphs only so uh we could add in a civic thing something like that that easily so anyone can migrate all the data uh into the uh, paragraph that is provided by civic theme like uh, it's my because i i did a migration project and the challenge was uh, i and josh was doing that uh, about the field collection to paragraph migration and uh, that was kind of a very handy tool uh, then when we migrate all the content then uh, so it's doable uh, technically theoretically I, I would say it's easy 
and if we can provide a scenario if we can provide a tool that will ease ease any developer or anyone to directly migrate whole site data into the new civic theme system so you can maybe, maybe a maybe new product something like idea. that in a Neil, do you want to answer yeah, that? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I so Gurman, we definitely are talking about it. I mean, obviously, you know uh, about Merlin. So yeah, basically, I was a part of a development team. Yeah, so yeah, I'm exactly. Aware. I was like, you know it very well. So uh, based on, we also <laughs> have another um, open source tool, just so you're aware. I'm not sure if you've heard of it or not, but it's called Merlin and it does, um, it's a migration tool. So yeah, you don't I, have to, yeah yep. do all that. So there is that part, but I also know that it's not like, that's not necessarily one-to-one, -one, like just because you've migrated your content, right. That automatically, you know, everything looks, uh, yeah. great with the, with the architecture. So it is something that, um, we're definitely in the, um, planning process of right now as well. Um, but yeah, Akhil, I wasn't sure if you had any other thoughts of, of what you were going to say at all. Yeah, so uh, it's a good idea and it is definitely something we're working on. So part of what we're doing is we've got a few different tools to help migrate sites. So whether that's from, well, specifically in this case, D7, especially for the end of life um, campaign, there's first part of it is obviously civic theme. We need the target um, system to for sites to go into. Uh, Merlin is an open source tool which helps with migration um, scripting in large, in certain cases, so large sites and high volume content would be um, mapped into Merlin and Merlin would then move that across. Now part of what we're trying to work out and obviously is this end-to-end -end process of using Merlin to be able to uh, migrate into civic theme sites. So there's a UI we're working on, I'm not sure how much we can give away, but there is something that we're working on um, and that will help allow some of the mapping, some of that pre-work uh, once you have that planned out uh, as far as the content types and mapping goes. Um, and then you can plug that in and then it would actually get provisioned. And we have another tool called Launchpad, I think um, Daniel mentioned very early on, but that's a provisioning tool. So the, the gap between what we have now is the Merlin UI to plug in all the content, content types, et cetera. Then we have a provisioning call, tool called Launchpad, which would then go and grab all these structures and then provision into Civic Theme. Now Launchpad at the moment does um, help with provisioning. So you can go into a wizard eight step process and takes 20 minutes to provision a GovCMS at the moment, a GovCMS civic theme based site. Um, and that's that default site that we showed earlier. It will build out one of those straight away. Yeah, but I do. Uh, uh, I can yeah. understand Merlin is, a, yeah. uh, Merlin is a one tool that can be, uh, that uh, we did a couple of migration using that. Uh, that's perfectly okay. Uh, but uh, but in terms of a generic uh, scenario that uh, no one, like I, I'm not sure, maybe 1% of the developer aware about the Merlin framework and all, and not everyone is that. And uh, let's suppose the uh, situation is like that I'm, I'm working on a project and I just want to switch the theme to do new design. And uh, if I'm, I have the design system in a way that I can easily migrate data uh, by clicking on maybe by some settings, like I just want to migrate these uh, paragraph into these civic <coughs> compatible paragraph and that is all automatically be done. So uh, maybe we can uh, provide some kind of system. Like uh, we can also add uh, civic theme also provided demo data, but yeah, it can be possible that we should add uh, kind of a system where user can choose, like we, they need to add data or anytime they can uh, cre create or add data as per, as part of a demo content. So uh, yeah, that's possible. In, in WordPress, I saw um, in many themes, that kind of a functionality where you can uh, install the theme and then you can go back and anytime you can switch, like I want to uh, uh, like, at the demo data right now to see how exactly it will look like. And so something like that we can be think about it. No, I think I think that's really great. Um, because yes, I mean, and, and obviously we know too that, you know, if we're just doing a page content type for the yeah. most part, right? With with Civic Theme and then, you know, coming where we have all of these other content structures, like that comes into into play, but also just how it translates, you know, from uh, one UI or theme to the to the next with a different architecture um, definitely needs to be considered. Um, Josh, <laughs> so <you're> having... <laughs> one thing I noted like it has it's having its own content type. So when we make it open source, like Drupal comes with its own content type. 
so what will happen like that so already we have data so for that what is the like uh, all the uh, let me answer that question uh like civic theme or uh, the bundle is already like prefixed by the civic underscore everything so if you check all the content type all the paragraph type um, even the field type everything is prefixed by civic so those are kind of a new content type would be added in as part of a civic theme installation no no what i meant is like i have content in drupal which is there like i have pages or i have my content so it's like yeah, additional that, step. that's the part of migration <laughs> that's we were talking about how exactly yeah. we can yeah. migrate those data exactly. to the civic compatible theme that's part of a migration only because civic theme comes into the new content type new paragraph types everything would be new if you are going to uh, use on existing site we you do you do need a, a migration stuff like either is a, a merlin or either is a custom mm -hmm. solution or either you can develop your own migration script to uh, migrate all the data from one paragraph to another one content type to another content type and Merlin as a tool can do that. I mean, it can be mapped um, and you can programmatically build up the paragraphs or the pages themselves. So it just that's just the amount of time. So it's just how much time do you need? Because obviously the patterns for each of the different page types or page layouts, um, they can either be done manually if there's only half a dozen to a dozen landing pages. But if it is something across the entire site, you could map out a Merlin to build out programmatically each of the paragraphs and then in, inject all the content that you need in there. It's based off the configurations. We've done that a couple of times as well for some of the migration projects. All righty. Any other comments? Any other comments? Any other issues, things, questions, anything about? No, I just want to just say thanks for the for the feedback too, and Paul, thank you for that uh, suggestion as well. It's really helpful to you know hear um, even where there might be gaps or additional you know areas of work that we uh, have moving forward, and um, definitely helps make sure that we're in good shape as we release it to the world uh, in the next few weeks. So.